Depending on whether or not you want to look like a flying squirrel, it might be the perfect sweater for you. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Nobody is as orange as you, right? Hi, my name's Mark and welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, you know how much I love knitting and wearing sweaters. So today I'm sharing a long-awaited video topic, which is my top five sweater recommendations, beginner-friendly, for you. So if you're a beginner, you've never knit a sweater and you're looking for the perfect pattern, or you're someone experienced looking to see some pattern recommendations and maybe gain some advice to give to other knitters in your life, then stick around. Let's get into it. Before we start our search for these beginner-friendly patterns, I want to talk a little bit about the different construction methods of sweaters. So I have in front of me three sweaters that I've made in the last year, and each of these sweaters has a different construction, a different style that fits the body differently and has a different look overall. So I'll start with the yoke sweater. So a yoke sweater has a rounded yoke. If you were to flatten it out, uh, it would be really a complete circle. I'll post some pictures here up on the screen to show you what I mean there. Typically these sweaters are worked in a top-down fashion, meaning that you cast on first at the neck and then you increase. You increase quite a bit until you have enough fabric that will drape over the front of your body, your arms, and then meet underneath and then form the tube, the cylinder of the body of the sweater. The sweater I'm currently wearing is the Field Sweater designed by Camilla Vad, and it is a yoke style sweater. It's knit from the top down with a rounded yoke. The increases are placed evenly throughout the circumference of each round, and it gives you a really rounded shape in the end. I'm going to model each style of sweater to show you how they fit the body differently, and it might give you an idea of what sweater would fit you in the most flattering or comfortable way. So a yoke sweater that I have in front of me is my halibut sweater from Caitlin Hunter. This is a colorwork sweater, and you can see at the top of it, uh, it's just rounded. It increases evenly and gets bigger and bigger until it reaches the full size needed to fit me. So I'll cut to a clip of me wearing this yoke sweater and hopefully you'll be able to gather a little bit about the fit from a top-down yoke style. Okay, sorry for this angle. I feel like such a giant, but <laughs> this is the easiest way for me to pivot back and forth in the same filming space. So this is my halibut sweater. It's one of my yoke sweaters. It's designed by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks, and I'm, I'm really happy with the shape of it. Um, let's see, I'll clip this to me so that I can move my arms freely. So the yoke sweater, it grows evenly, and I feel like this shape on me, I don't know, I feel like it makes the eye follow in a smooth way, and I feel like it's somewhat flattering. I mean, I'm a pretty enormous human, and so a lot of things I wear make me feel like I'm uncomfortably spilling out or uncomfortably cinched in, and this yoke style feels so easy to wear. I like that the sleeves come out of the yoke. You can see the way they just grow out of it. Some people say they don't like a yoke sweater because when they raise their arms, the whole sweater raises with them, which is true. So um, if you're looking for a sweater to play basketball in, probably don't do a yoke sweater. But if you're someone who normally has your arms to your side or at a medium level, you're using your arms to gesture, you're going about whatever you do, <laughs> this might be a good style. If you're someone who always needs to lift up and raise, then yes, you do get some raising of the sweater with the arms. But that doesn't bother me. I take it into account when I make the sweater, when I make the length and the final size. So this sweater works for me. It's one of my favorite styles to wear. I'm a big fan of the yoke sweater. I think that on my larger frame, something about it, the way the material drapes, the way the pattern catches the eye, it does feel flattering to me. 
I also like the seamless feel. I like that the sleeves and the body just grow out of the top portion of the sweater. So it feels pretty comfortable. There are very few things to distract me or irritate me as I wear a yoke style sweater. And I think they look decently flattering on me. This next sweater in front of me is a raglan sweater. Raglan style sweaters are super popular. You'll notice the distinctive channel here and the channel, this features a decorative element, but even on a traditional raglan sweater without that decorative embellishment, you will see the increases. You'll see the channel of increases running sort of from the collarbone down to the underarm on both the front and back of the sweater. So the way these sweaters work, they can be worked either top down or bottom up, but when you have the increases or decreases, depending on which way you're building your sweater, they are always anchored around four points. So we have the front, uh, front left, front right, back left, back right, and those anchors, those lines, are creating this raglan style. And so the sleeve grows out from that point, but you're maintaining um, more integrity of the shape of fabric on the front and back panels. So raglans are super popular. You'll see them all over, both in hand knits and machine knits. And I'll try this one on for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut to a clip of me wearing this sweater to show the differences of how it fits. Okay, next we have a raglan sweater. Um, Again, I have the seams here running down, separating out the arms, and oh, I'm just, I'm not happy with the look of this on me. I feel like it accentuates any lumps, any shapes. I know it doesn't help that I have horizontal stripes on here, but even the raglan construction itself just doesn't float my boat. Um, I like this sweater. I like how colorful it is, but I don't choose it that often. I don't pick it up all of the time because I don't like the construction. I'm constantly pulling at things, trying to gather it, trying to get it to sit in a way that feels comfortable to me. So this might be the perfect construction for you. You might have machine-made sweaters or t-shirts that are done in this construction style. But for me, from experience, I've learned it's not my favorite. I don't feel at ease and comfortable when wearing a raglan. So <laughs> that's that, those are my thoughts. While I like the look of a raglan sweater, I'm not sure that the feel of it, the increase points or decrease points anchored around those four lines feels the most comfortable for me when I wear them. And I don't know that it looks the most flattering. Um, something about me already being very broad, being very wide, I don't know, having those angular points distracts me visually, and it might just be in my head. I might look just the same wearing a yoke sweater or a raglan sweater, but the feel of it is different to me. So I only have a couple of raglan sweaters that I've ever made. Typically, I gravitate more towards yoke sweaters for the aforementioned reasons. And the last style of sweater that we'll look at today is a sweater with a set-in sleeve. So this is like when you have a t-shirt and you have maybe the crew neck at the top, the panel of fabric for the front and back, and then you have seams across the shoulders and the sleeves fit right on the edge. They're not sloping out in a raglan style. They're not um, ballooning out like a blouse or a night shirt, but they are set in. So you have them right at the shoulder points, um, straight up and down with that circumference, and then they grow out. So I have a sweater here. This is the Weekender from Andrea Mowry. And if we look at it, you can see the top line straight across. I've got, it's a little hard to tell with this, uh, with this yarn color. I've got my shoulder seam right across the top. It slopes a little bit with the shoulder shaping. And then you'll see the sleeve. You can see the difference in the stitch definition. I'll zoom in a little bit. The sleeve is set in. So the sleeve starts, there's a clean break. It's not sloping out like a raglan and it's not um, draping down, growing out from a yoke. It is a hard stop between the edge of the body and where the stitches are picked up for the sleeve. 
I have several sweaters that have set in sleeves. When I first started making sweaters, I would work them all bottom up. And once I got to the point where you would add sleeves, I would leave those stitches out. And then I would work the front section of the shoulders, the upper body and shoulders, the back section, seam together the shoulders. And then I would have two armhole openings. It looked sort of like a sweater vest at that point. And then I would go in, pick up stitches all around that opening and work a sleeve. I like that structure. I think it's very flattering. Um, I don't know if I like it more than a yoke sweater, but let me try this on and show you the difference. Okay, last but not necessarily least is my Weekender from Andrea Mowry. This is a sweater, a boxy style sweater with a set in sleeve. So you can see the start of my sleeve starts here and runs out. And of course that drapes down a bit because this is a boxy sweater. Um, I have some sweaters with set-in sleeves that start right at the shoulder. Similar idea. So I like the sweater. I'm happy with the fit of it. The only difference between this style and the yoke for me is that here you see a really clear line of the length, the vertical, um, the vertical direction of the fabric, where the yoke sweaters spread out evenly. So I think the eye is drawn out away from the body, not necessarily straight up and down along the sides of your body. However, I feel like this sweater is decently flattering on me. I think the shape hangs in a nice way. I like the way it drapes. I don't feel that it clings to me unnecessarily. Um, something about the raglan, it does cling. And because the stress points of the sweater hit in different places, I feel like it's always clinging to me and I have to pull it away. With this, I can put it on and go. Same with the yoke sweaters. Once they're on, I feel like they sit in a flattering way on my body. So this is the set in sleeve example from my Weekender by Andrea Mowry. All right, now that you've seen three different styles of sweater construction, I hope you have some opinions about what you think looks the most flattering on me, maybe, or what you can imagine might be the most comfortable or flattering look on you. Now again, it's not about looking great when you wear a sweater or you knit a sweater. It's about spending time on a craft, on a hobby that you enjoy, that brings you peace, pleasure, whatever it is. Uh, and so I always say, it doesn't matter what colors you pick. It doesn't matter what patterns you pick, if it's a pattern you'd like to follow and you feel good following. It's about the process of crafting, having this in our lives. It's not about trying to look better than someone else, but I know when I make my choices of color, when I make my choices of patterns, I always have at the front of my mind the idea that what I'm picking, hopefully, will make me feel good, that I'll feel confident in what I'm wearing, and that it's something I'll want to wear often. So those are the considerations for me. It's not about looking amazing <laughs> or looking better than anyone else, but it's about choosing something that I'll be excited to wear, I'll be comfortable wearing, and I'll take pride in wearing. So um, now that we've talked about these construction styles, I've voiced a few times that the yoke sweater is my personal favorite, at least for now. After that, I think I choose a set-in sleeve. After that, I choose a raglan. I have um, I have a lot of fat. I'm not smooth. I'm not, um, I'm not fit or toned. And so when I wear things, I often think about how they drape, how they sit on my body. And I want something that has the right type of structure and drape that makes me feel a little smoothed out, <laughs> a little bit evened out. It makes me feel more confident and more presentable. Something about the raglan for me, I think those increase points sit at an awkward point in my chest where I carry a lot of fat. And so I pull at those sweaters. I, I don't think I feel at ease or comfortable. So for me, when I'm looking at patterns, when I'm considering a sweater, if it's a yoke sweater, I get excited about that. Uh, if it's a raglan, if I love the pattern, then I'll make it. Like this raglan here, the lighthouse keeper, I like it a lot, and um, it kind of fits like a sweatshirt, so I just pull it over whatever else I'm wearing. I don't ever wear it in dressy situations. It's more of a pullover for cold weather, and 
I would make another raglan, but if it's something that I would want to wear in a situation where I feel really presentable or a little bit more dressy, I don't know that I would choose the raglan construction. It may be the perfect thing for you. So <laughs> let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions about sweater construction and what is your go-to pick. Now, as promised, let's do a search. Let's look for five great, trusted, fashionable, exciting, beginner-friendly sweater patterns. Here we go. Okay, I've got my computer in front of me and I'm already on Ravelry.com. If you're not familiar with Ravelry, it's a really great pattern resource and social website where people can keep track of what they're making, keep notes on the projects, um, you can communicate with other crafters, follow what they're doing, etc. So I have videos on Ravelry if you've never heard of that or if you want to navigate it more easily, check that out. Otherwise, let's start looking for these sweaters. So on Ravelry, uh, I go to my homepage and I'm going to search, but I'm not actually going to search for sweater, I'm just going to hit the magnifying glass and I'm going to look at all possible patterns. Now that I'm here, I'm going to use the filters along the left side hand, the left hand side of the page to narrow things down. So I'm scrolling along and first I'm going to look, oh, there's a cat. Hi, Gus. <laughs> Let's see if he'll say hello. Oh. Oh. Hi, Gus. Do you want to say hello to everybody? This is Gus. If you're brand new to the channel, you might have never met Gus before. How lucky you are to meet Gus for the first time. Gus is one of our cats. He's a great cat. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Nobody is as orange as you, right? Okay, <laughs> he's very helpful. He loves to be near, to hang out, and to help try to film these videos. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking on the left-hand side of the page, scrolling through some of these filters. And the first thing I'm going to do is select clothing. Under clothing, I'm going to choose sweater, and I'm gonna look for pullover sweaters. I think cardigans are great, but sometimes the construction, the button band, the button holes, the different panels you need to do, the possible steaking, all of that could very easily lead to advanced beginner or intermediate patterns. So we're gonna stick with pullover sweaters for now. So when I select pullover, it's giving us 119,000 results. We're going to keep selecting some of these filters to bring that down. Under attributes, we're going to look at construction. So here I'm going to look for um, seamless because I'm looking for seamless top-down sweaters. And let's see if we could also choose top-down. All right, scrolling down further, I wanna make sure that this is a pattern we can access. Some patterns listed on Ravelry are patterns that come from books. They are no longer in print. It's not something you can buy on the internet. So we want to make sure it's a pattern we can either get for free or purchase through Ravelry. We can get our hands on it today. So I'm choosing Ravelry download. We definitely want it to have a picture. And then under age, I'm assuming we're all looking for adult sweaters, but if you're looking for um, different ages, babies, toddlers, kids, youth, you could choose that here. So now we're already down to 8,000 results. That's a little bit better. And under weight, I'm gonna choose DK weight and worsted. If this is your first sweater, I think it makes sense to do something in a weight that's easy to work with and is going to work up at a decent rate. So using fingering weight could be nice. It would make a beautiful lightweight sweater, but your stitches and possibly the needles you use will be pretty small, meaning it might take a lot longer to get your sweater off the needles and ready to wear. So for your first sweater, I'm gonna recommend DK weight, a medium weight to worsted, which is a pretty good sweater weight. Uh, you could go with things that are bulky or super bulky, but I find that having needles that big and yarn that heavy can be fatiguing. And it also might be tr uh, troubling finding the right fit and working with that much fabric. So we're going in the middle, sort of the slightly higher end of middle. So medium to uh, worsted weight yarn. 
And I'm going to select a couple more parameters. I want to choose five star rated patterns because we're hoping that these patterns have been tested thoroughly. We're hoping that hundreds or thousands of people have worked these patterns before us to make sure that the patterns are straightforward, they are error free, uh, things are worded in a way that makes sense to the people following these patterns. So going with a five star rated pattern should mean that it's been out long enough and it's been tested by enough people and given a pretty good approval rating. Now, this is super important. Difficulty. Um, I'm going to choose level one, piece of cake, and level two, easy. Both of these levels should be safe from beginner-friendly sweaters. If you're looking for projects and you are way past the beginner level and you want things that really challenge you, this is a great thing to do on Ravelry. Once you're doing your search for whatever you want to make, you could choose specifically a really high difficulty rating if that's what you want. And the last thing I'll select is English because English is the only language I speak, so if this were for me, I would want my pattern results to be in English, but if English is not your preferred language, you could choose your language here. Now I'm going to scroll back up. This has narrowed us down to 128 matches. I'm much happier looking through 128 results versus hundreds of thousands of results. All right, as we look through these results, you'll notice I've already added some to my favorites because, surprise, surprise, I had a look before I started filming to make sure I would know where I'm going with this. I didn't want to do too much sifting, trial and error on camera in front of you. I don't want to waste your time. So I've saved some to my favorites, but we can have a look here. Uh, at this point, I just like to consider the pictures. I like to see what catches my eye, what looks like something I would want to wear or I would want to make. And immediately I see some things that look more advanced than beginner level. I see color work. I see some texture. I see lots of striping. Not that any of those things are necessarily beyond the ability level of a beginner, but they're going to complicate things. So people in the comments of my videos specifically asked for beginner friendly. What is the best beginner first sweater I should make? And so for that purpose, I want to choose something that uses one yarn. It keeps most likely the same stitch pattern throughout. There might be a little bit of ribbing here and there, but you're not doing a lot of back and forth. You're not having to follow a chart or hopefully pages and pages of instructions. We're looking for something that is able to be worked all the time. It, it can handle a little bit of distraction. <laughs> it can handle starting and stopping. So I'm, I'm omitting things with stripes and texture for now. But uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Once you do your first striped project, once you do your first color work project, your cable project, you'll realize all of these things are absolutely attainable, but it's nice to get there with building blocks. So for the purpose of this video, I'm skipping over those and I'm looking for solid texture, and hopefully we're going to find an example of each construction type we talked about earlier. So I've got flax worsted here, and this is a super, super popular pattern. It's from Tin Can Knits and it's also a free pattern. So if you're someone who is wary about spending money on a pattern, I completely understand. I see things about this all the time. There are so many patterns out there in the world for free. People say, why would I spend money on a pattern? Well, you're spending money on a pattern because the designer has put a lot of time and effort into it. So I spend money on patterns almost with almost every project I make, and I'm hoping that the money I'm spending is going to support the designer. It's helping them um, spend their time, their resources in drafting, executing, testing, and editing a pattern so that by the time it gets to me, it's easy to work, it's error-free, and it's a really enjoyable experience. That's not to say a free pattern won't give you the same experience. It might. So in this case, We've already looked for five-star rated patterns. We're looking for things that have been heavily tested and given a lot of good feedback. So this is a real bonus that we click on this pattern and we see, surprise, it's free. So 
<laughs> that's great. And if you're not ready to invest in a pattern, this might be a great sweater for you to start with. So just looking at a couple details, this pattern came out in 2013, so it's been around for over 10 years, plenty of time for people to test it. And it calls for worsted weight yarn. It gives us the gauge here, the needle size, and then uh, a quick sort of abbreviated version of the yardage you might need for your size. And uh, then we're gonna have more information about where to get the pattern and the pattern itself. All of this information is available to us before we purchase the pattern, or in this case, before we download the pattern because it's free. So it's always nice to sift through, just make sure everything checks out for what you intend to do with your project. And of course, there are lots of pictures along the side, and you can click on any of these pictures to expand them. To save us a little bit of time, I don't want this video to be endlessly long, uh, I'm going to continue this search, going back and adjusting my parameters to hopefully find a sweater with set-in sleeves, to find a yoke sweater, and to look for a couple more raglan examples. And I'm going to fast forward and I'll meet you at my bundle I've created where I've put all of my recommended patterns. On Ravelry, once you've added patterns to your favorites, you can really easily put them into bundles. You can keep bundles based on certain projects you want to work, you can keep bundles based on difficulty, on yarn weight. There are all sorts of ways to organize your pattern ideas. So I have a bundle I've created with beginner-friendly sweaters. And in this bundle, <laughs> I have eight results. Some of that is because I have duplicates of the same sweater pattern designed for DK weight and worsted. So let's break this down. The first two sweaters in this bundle are flax DK and flax worsted. This is the same sweater, it's an identical idea of a garment, just done out of two weights. You could work flax DK if you're looking to use DK weight yarn, you want something that's slightly lighter in weight and feel, or you could work flax worsted if you want a heavier, slightly more substantial sweater. Both of these sweaters are top-down in their construction, and they are raglan sweaters. I don't know that it says raglan anywhere here in the description, but when I look at it, I can see, oh, let me drag in. I can see the line where we have increases on both sides. The front stays a little more stable, and we have this, this dart running down from collarbone to underarm with increases on both sides. Again, both of these patterns are free. So if you're thinking you want to do a raglan sweater as your first sweater, this is a great place to start. The next pattern I have saved is the Real Easy Raglan. This is, again, top-down raglan construction, and this is by Emily uh, Boldon, Boldwan, and it's been around since August of 2021. But again, this had five-star ratings. It was rated as very beginner-friendly. And this pattern is also free. Let's take a look at it. So again, you'll see this line from, well, it's further out than collarbone, but it runs from you know, the top corner to underarm, and that's where we have our raglan increases. This sweater is very simple in construction and also simple in texture. Between this sweater and the flax sweater option, if you noticed on the flax sweater, running down each arm is a textured sort of um, garter texture, and that sets it apart. So depending on how much detail and how much texture you want, I would recommend either of these as a good starting point for a raglan style sweater. I've got one more raglan option. This is a short sleeve sweater, which I thought might be a good option depending on where you live. Some people don't live in a climate where they really need long sleeve wool sweaters. So this is Nook by um, Jonah or Jana Helene. And this comes from Lina magazine, and it was published in 2016. So it's been around for a while. Again, it has five star ratings. This is a paid pattern. 
it's uh, 650 in euro, which I think isn't too bad for a sweater pattern. If you're making a sweater, you're probably spending at least 40 hours making your sweater, if not 100, 150, 200 hours of crafting time. So when I break it down that way, and I look at the cost of the yarn, I think it's not crazy to add in another five to $10 for the pattern I'm using. So this is very simple in texture. I like that it has the short sleeves. And again, you can see that raglan increase. And here it is in another color. Okay, that's it for my raglan options. I gave you three patterns, the flax with two different size or two different weight options you could do. All right, next we'll look at a top-down yoke style sweater. This is called Autumn Gold, and it comes from the designer Vera Valamaki from Rain Knitwear Designs. And this was published in 2019, and again has five-star rating and a good beginner easy rating. So this calls for a DK weight yarn, and technically they're holding two yarns together, a fingering and a lace weight, something like mohair or a runner to give a different texture and look to the project. But you could also do this out of a single strand of DK weight yarn. This is a beautiful sweater, very simple in its texture. And if we zoom in, let's see, let's get a good picture of this rounded yoke. So you can see as the sweater grows, as it increases, there's nothing interrupting the flow of the fabric. It's seamless, it's just growing evenly, there's no raglan line, and there's no um, hard start of a set in sleeve. This is a paid pattern at 690 euro. This is a beautiful option of a very simple texture, top-down yoke sweater. Something with a similar look, this is a capolette or capolette by Elizabeth Smith, and this sweater is bottom up, so it's not a top-down yoke, but it's bottom up, and you'll, you'll see in these pictures that the construction across the top is similar to that yoke style. Um, there's nothing interrupting the lines here. There's no raglan line. The sleeves are just growing out of that top section. Really, this is sort of a boxy style sweater or a capelet. It's not really a full sweater because you don't have the sleeves, but I thought the look of it is beautiful, very simple, and straightforward. So again, depending on where you live, if you need sleeves or not, this might be a nice option. All right, the final category I wanted to cover is a sweater construction with a set-in sleeve. So this sweater option is called Boxy, and it's from Hohi Locatelli, a very famous designer known for having beautiful, clearly written patterns. So Boxy has been around since 2012. I've seen a lot of them out in the wild, and it is Boxy. So let's look at some pictures. You can see sort of the oversized drapey style here. And then when the arm is raised, it is truly extremely Boxy. Um, I feel like it looks a bit like you're a flying squirrel and you raise your arms out to the side and your sweater fills in like, like bat wings. But this is a, a popular style. A lot of designers do things like this with a very boxy look. The boxy sweaters are also very straightforward to make. You're typically working bottom up, so you're just working the circumference of your sweater. You work up when you hit the sleeves, you bind off and you leave that open. You finish the front and then the back of the sweater, seam it together at the shoulders, and because it's so boxy, the sweater body might be ending halfway down your arm, so when you pick up those stitches for the sleeve, it doesn't take long to accomplish. So really forgiving in the fit, um, really straightforward to work. So boxy is a paid pattern, but again, a trusted, well-written pattern, and I also saved the worsted version. So the first version we looked at was DK weight. This worsted version is slightly heavier, your stitches are going to be slightly bigger, and it might work up a little faster for you. So depending on how heavy you need your sweater to be, you can choose, just like the flax sweater, if DK or worsted is right for you. 
Here's another example where someone changed colors once they got to the armhole. It's fun. Um, <laughs> depending on whether or not you want to look like a flying squirrel, it might be the perfect sweater for you. Uh, all jokes aside, it's a really flattering look, that oversized sort of boxy sweater. So I think that's everything I needed to cover here. The only thing I didn't talk about is a sweater that is constructed in pieces. A lot of beginner sweater patterns might have you construct panel by panel, but that does leave some trickiness when it comes to joining the sweater. So by that I mean you would work a front panel of the sweater flat, you'd work back and forth, you'd make an almost identical version for the back, and then you would work your sleeves, again, flat. And once you have all of those pieces done, you have to seam them together. You have to line them up. Typically you use mattress stitch or mattress seam to get them to discreetly join, and that's a lot of finishing work. So if you're doing this on your own, you're not part of a beginner sweater class or a group that's doing this, I would recommend doing a sweater that has worked in the round. Whether you're working bottom up or top down, raglan, set in sleeve, or yoke style, I think working in the round, just working in that cylinder, letting your project grow and grow, is going to be more straightforward than working several different pieces and having to sew them together at the end. That's just my opinion on it. Um, another instructor, another teacher, another designer might tell you differently, but um, people came with this question. They wanted to know some beginner-friendly first sweater patterns, and this is what I wanted to offer today. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that seeing some of my sweaters, hearing a little bit about these different types of construction have been helpful to you. Um, if you're making your first sweater or making plans, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, I'd love to know what you choose, and I'd love to see your progress. So <laughs> let me know in the comments. Find me on Instagram. Find me on Ravelry. You can share your pictures with me there. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being part of my community. Thank you for sharing yourselves. Uh, I love getting to know you. I love feeling like my community is growing every time I come on with a different video. So thank you so much. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy crafting to you. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.